it occurred to me, like, in fairness to this movie, I can see how porn could be destructive if you literally don't know how a motion picture works. If, well, right. if, if, you, if you do not have the, like, the level of cognitive awareness to, like, understand that the thing in the box isn't yeah, real. Yeah, no, that giant penis is about to come on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a Mormon watching Oculus Quest porn for the first time, batting away. Get out of my house! <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because sometimes that's what it takes. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my socially isolated friend, Heath and Right, Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. I'm just uh, watching some porn in a dark alley. Are we doing the yeah. show? <laughs> <laughs> that is where the porn lives. And, of course, sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Not great. I was doing this dance for Heath in this alley, and then you called, and he's, just, he's completely distracted. I need you to commit to the moment, Eli. Get into I it. am. I'm, I'm giving it my I, all. I, I'm starting to feel like you were charging the company for a lot of outfits that weren't just for the live shows, Eli. I'm not having this fight on air. Not again. <laughs> it's a legitimate business expense, Noah. Thank okay, you. That's true. That's true. All right. And of course, joining us tonight is a Jewish guy who was hiding his real name even before we elected a Nazi as our president. Moishi, welcome back to the show, sir. <laughs> Been too long. Thank you. So good to be here. Great to have you again. All right. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched pornography. You bet your ass. The great we oh, lie. <laughs> it's a Mormon propaganda movie about the dangers of heroin. And it just got ADR to say porn instead of heroin <laughs> right? for this version. They changed nothing else at all. It's just a remake of something else they made. Now it's about porn. It's just, yeah, like they, they, they had to cut out the scene where the chick jumped out the window. But that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you hate pornography, but of course you haven't seen any. No, because no. of course you haven't seen any. <laughs> you will love this informational film. I've seen videos on how to fight Bigfoot with more specificity <laughs> than this movie. It's pretty good. You got to get inside its guard. It's, the, it's similar That's in porn, it's, it's too. Just like bears. Yep. <laughs> so, okay, I have a theory of how this came to be. So I feel like I think that the producer of this film is the guy whose wife appears in this film talking about her terrible porn addicted husband. You know, the one that they like fucking FBI informant out and change her voice and everything. I think that that lady caught her husband watching porn and she was going to make a big whole thing about it. And he was never going to get laid again. And then like he made this video as a way to trick her into thinking that he was taking that porn addiction thing super serious and wasn't watching it anymore. Right. Because this whole fucking movie has this feeling of like, uh, well, you know, porn is really bad because it hurts the people with who have the pain <laughs> in general. <laughs> words. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yes, I would. I'm going to go with best worst pop scare. <laughs> um, Ooh, so yeah. At one point, they're trying to explain how the porn industry, it's giant Illuminati corporation run by Lex Luthor. Yeah. <laughs> but then they show us this super basic office. It's just like four people, modest business attire, and they're looking at spreadsheets in a yeah. conference room. And, and that's the pop scare. I just described it. Like, we get the evil photo negative thing for a second, but we're just looking at fucking Steve from accounting wearing pleated dockers, and it's like, ring, ring, ring. it makes no sense. <laughs> well, okay, so, so you, now when you said, when I saw a Best Worst Pop Scare in there, I assumed you were talking about that at the beginning when they like, the porn is outside lurking around our house and you see the porn walk by very quickly. That was, that's what I assumed you meant. But yeah, no, that was, that also was a good one. No, see, that's not pop scare. That's Hitchcocking in drama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This movie's a lot like a Hitchcock. Movie. Yeah, no, a very Hitchcocky. And that was the, that was, I really found it in the style of Fellini, but <laughs> we can debate it. Well, Hitchcock is actually one of my favorite titles. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> 
I enjoyed it as much as I enjoy Fellini films. Well, films. yeah, okay. No, that's fair. No, well, honestly, no, because this one was 22 minutes long. But yes, I get what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Will Smith is in that movie, Hitchcock. <laughs> I will nominate this for best worst episode of How It's Made. Because I, <laughs> while I have never been on a porn set, I have seen a lot of what I have been assured is genuine behind the scenes footage. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this just gets it all wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, look, trust me, anybody who's like done VR porn and looked around a little bit can tell you this is not what the set looks like <laughs> on a porn. They oversell it. Yeah. Apparently <laughs> on Patreon, given a lot of money and getting a lot of weird extras on porn <laughs> sets, but not actually going there. You get footage, I guess. Well, right. No, that's at the $10 level is where you, we actually get to Up go. level, yeah. man. Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Sounds like a pervert to me. <laughs> Eli. Oh, it's not a Th thing. Fucking creep. <laughs> I'll tell you what his cell phone number isn't. <laughs> so. All right. So I'm going to go with best worst lies, right? Which, I mean, it, this movie doesn't have the best lies that we've seen, and it doesn't have the worst lies we've seen. But, like, it's it's built, it's it's called, you know, uh, Pornography the Great Lie. And it's built around this whole, like, you know, we're going to tell you one of the lies that pornography tells you, and then we're going to, you know, like, debunk that lie or whatever. But they can only come up with two lies, both of which are, are true, by the way. One is that you're, you can't be addicted to pornography, and the other is that watching porn doesn't harm you. But they, they, that's all they could come up with, and they had to keep coming up with different ways of rephrasing those same two things over and over, so it seemed like they had a bunch. <laughs> I actually wrote down in my notes at one point, ah, I could quit porn anytime I want. And then moments later, that exact phrase popped up on the screen, and they seriously <laughs> were saying that. <laughs> See, I was going to go with best worst unresolved plot strands. So as Noah mentioned, there are like interviews interspersed throughout the movie, but they're actors playing interviews. They're not actual interviews. They're actors playing them. And people in these interviews will casually mention the consequences they endured for looking at porn. And based on those consequences, either someone super overreacted to porn or these dudes were not Watching Brazzers. You know what I'm saying? This is not. They had to install a thing on their computer to get the porn they were watching. Yeah, right. Right. The guy who's talking about like 31 years later, the porn still echoes in my mind. Well, here's the thing. We found one of the guys admits to buying porn, like with his money. So we already, that's all. He's already taken the first step towards that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Guy's getting his arm chopped off with a saw like we're in for a dream by the end of this thing. It's absurd. Yeah. The consequences they come up with. It is a small step from like entering your credit card number to just like watching a dog fuck a woman's skull. No, yeah. <laughs> That's what they say. I At least it was for me. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's the old adage. That's why you became a $10 patron. I get it. Oh, yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know about you guys, but all this talk about a dog fucking a woman's skull makes me need a quick break. But we'll be back for the refractory period and pornography. The great lie. That porn's really rough. So you've heard us talking about hymns and how they're helping guys look their best. If you haven't yet, it's time to see what they're all about. 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35. Once you've started noticing thinning hair, it could be too late. But the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have some. And that's where 4 comes in. They offer a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA-approved products to help treat hair loss. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. Prescription solutions backed by science. And right now, our listeners can get started with their first month free. Go to 4 slash gam. That's 4 slash gam. Prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if prescription is appropriate. Offer valid only if prescribed. Three months minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash gam. All right, everyone. Welcome to the first writer's room meeting of pornography. The great lie. Praise his name. Indeed. L'chaim. Uh, what? L'chaim. 
Yeah, I don't think there's a believable universe where I'm not Jewish, so I decided to just kind of... Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, okay. Now, look, this informational film is going to save hundreds, if not millions of souls from the clutches of pornography, so we've really got to nail this one. Sure, got to nail it. Absolutely, yep. yeah. But, of course, none of us here have ever watched pornography. Mm, question? We haven't? No, we haven't. <clears throat> right, of course we have. <laughs> right, yes, yeah, I certainly have not myself. Yeah, me, me no. neither. No. Exactly. Well, all right, exactly. So, given all of that, it's going to be extra hard for us to write this thing. Oh, right, because because we've never watched and, it. And yeah, so. right. And we need the people who watch this movie <clears throat> to know we've never watched it. Right. Of course. Of course. So. What do people who've never watched pornography know about pornography? Which is us. You're talking about us. Uh, right. yeah, yeah, what do we totally. Totally. No know question. No in question. reality? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, we know it has lights. <gasps> mm-hmm. And a camera. That's it. Got yep. a camera. Yep. Okay. Great. And the women are attractive. Do, do we know that? Would we? I don't think we know that. Uh, uh, I, 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 would, I was just kind of assuming. Um... Okay, well, uh, the women get paid, right? Sure, sure. I, I mean, ex- except for the, the amateurs. I mean, right, right. Yeah, of course. And that's like a ton of porn amateurs. I heard. I, I, well, heard I, I also have heard that. Yes, yes. Yep. Yeah, but I feel like it's always weird when there's very obviously just the one person. So they're trying to shoot forty-five different porns using the same dildo. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly. Yes, I hate that. You I mean hate that you too. mean you mm-hmm. both heard that you don't. Like that. You heard? Yep, we did. Yep, you heard correct. That. What you said. Yep. Right, because we never watch porn. Oh, exactly, exactly. Right. Not at all. Well, lights, camera, uh, people get paid. I think we've got enough. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we can make two movies with all that. Fantastic. Mm. All right, we'll shoot the entire thing on Monday. Really? You don't like the solo to camera stuff, huh? No, 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 I do, I do. But just don't do a weird little one act play with your dildo. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. You do that oh, thing. Yeah, I, that, that's fair. I heard. I, yep, I heard. I think that's fair, too. And we're back, and we're going to start off with this weird warning about how they employed actors and not real former pornography users. They didn't soil their hands with those people. (laughs) Yeah. These scenes have been recreated to protect confidentiality is what it says. So, like, I'm thinking, like, as a joke, I'm thinking, like, oh, these these Mormons watch porn, so they're going to be blurred out like FBI informants. That, how silly would that be? No, <laughs> they literally are. <laughs> they literally are. The great irony is that I will bet a thousand dollars that at least one of these actors has appeared in porn. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, yes. I want like, to know uh, what no that is. Fucking, no fucking shot that fucking Sally they got off Craigslist hasn't sucked a dick on camera. <laughs> yeah, no, and we really need the, the like the, the, the split screen on that. We absolutely need the split screen there. I want to do a deep dive of all their IMDBs. Is porn on IMDB? <laughs> no, no, they keep that up. There's an IPDB, I think. I'm sure there is. I've heard. <laughs> All right. So the camera opens up and we're looking at this house and it's in the suburbs or whatever. And a family that's just all so innocent and everything. And there's a we're getting like creeper cam, right? Serial killer cam perspective. Yeah. Here we see <laughs> pornography stalking another victim. I just wanted to say, like, if Riley Reed had jumped out of those bushes and stabbed a guy <laughs> to death, this is my favorite movie. <laughs> They look out the window. It's just Michael Myers masturbating in the yard, just wearing the mask and nothing else. <laughs> yeah. my, my note on this intro is this is a weird episode of Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> See, I wanted the Michael Myers theme to start playing on sweet sax. So it's just but uh, but on sax. So it's like wham, 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 wham. It's the, it's the porn version. Michael Myers walks up the door. How are you going to pay for these pizzas? I just... <laughs> Ran out of jobs. As, oh. This is all I got right now. And a serial killer thing ran out. I mean, to be fair, there is no better genre for this film than horror porn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it is horror porn. I'm just saying there's no better category at Blockbuster for it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> all right. And so the narrator, as we're watching this, is coming in with these ridiculously loaded questions. It's like, if you thought your family was in danger, would you do something about it? Or would you just sit there and watch like a little bitch? Right. Like, I mean, he might as well have just been like, 
What does Y E S spell? You know, again, <laughs> fuck you. But but like apparently what he's impl- and and then as this is happening, as he's saying all of this shit, we watch all the kids go to bed, like all of their rooms. Apparently, everyone in the house goes off to presumably watch porn <laughs> right at the same time. It's so, so like, fucking okay, weird. Okay, night time, night, night, night. Bye, everybody scatter. <laughs> <laughs> I I just want to know what internet provider this family has. What kind of bandwidth are they getting? <laughs> They're all fucking streaming Bang Bros at the same time. Hey, hey, hey everybody go down to 720p. We agree. 720. <laughs> but genuinely, what do you think what do you think the end of dinner was like? Were they all just like, well, time for bed? <laughs> Yeah, yes. right. <laughs> I too shall go to bed now. All at the same time. Can we be excused? We all said that really loud together. Yeah, right. okay. I don't know about you guys, but I'm that kind of antsy where you haven't jerked off all day. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, look, if this movie was trying to make the uh, the argument that masturbation is a fun family activity. You know what? I don't like where this joke's going. Never mind. I'm going to back it up. I'm going to back they, it up. They okay. are Mormons. They are Mormons. <laughs> I did like they showed it was. Well, I didn't like. You know what? Good point. I might abandon this, too. No, I'm going to explain what I was just <laughs> thinking. The brother and sister are shown back to back, not physically back to back. But like back to back. You're putting shots. a really fucked up picture here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my words keep getting twisted. No, they show in separate shots, but right next to each other, the brother going to his room and sister going to her room. And I wanted them to just like walk back out of their room slowly, be like, hey, so we're step siblings, right? I was watching watching something too. It was crazy. It's weird how they surprise you with that relationship like a third of the way through the movie, right? It is weird that they constantly, I'd love if they did that up front. Okay, so so here's a weird one for me. So the the narrator the whole time he's still going like you know if if someone was about to saw your children's ears off with an axe you know whatever and he comes across one that I found actually found kind of interesting. He says if someone was going to steal your soul, would you stand by and let them take it? And to me, that is a fascinating moral dilemma. <laughs> right? Like if somebody attempts to steal my vorpal sword, have they committed a crime? That's, we should get Andrew on for <laughs> yeah. that one. I also really appreciated just the like, someone's going to steal your soul. Take this serious. We're adults. Tone. Well, yeah, that's right. The thing. The, this film teeters dangerously close to making salient points like Does it? three times. I think so. I think it caught me like there was like one moment where it was like watching too much porn can give you unrealistic expectations of sex. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, I buy that. And it'll make your soul devil food. And I was like, yeah, oh, right. you, did it. Right. you did it, you stupid movie. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, one that really cracked me up, and I should explain to the listeners that we're recording this right in the middle of the, you know, at the beginning of a couple of weeks of this coronavirus lockdown, is where the narrator says, if all the people you hold dear are in danger, would you sit by and do nothing? And I'm like, no, no, they'd go to the goddamn bar and shit. (laughs) I'm I'm here with your people in Georgia. Yeah. But they're saying... Porn will steal your soul. That's their first message yep. in this movie. Yep. And I, I just want to see like Satan sliding a hustler across the table to somebody <laughs> being like, all right, one soul. This is right back off the table in one minute. This is <laughs> my offer. And then, okay, so so then he starts talking about how like back in the day, you used to have to like really go looking for porn. You had to get it back in, in, in his words, in dark alleyways and hidden places. <laughs> Nope. Mm -mm. You did not. They sold it at the Piggly Wiggly. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I think we can all agree this narrator was doing some absurd things in his life before he made this movie, including (laughs) apparently finding porn in dark alleys. Before the internet, the only way you could get porn was putting the nanny cam in the urinal. (laughs) (laughs) He's trying to buy porn using the drug handshake. Hello. Sir, today, stop it. Stop doing that. It's a whole magazine. It's a very long. You can't palm this. This is dumb. Stop going under the leg. No, no, he got stop going under the leg. On, uh, That's nothing. Back then. Oh, We're in a yeah. dark alley. We're fine. Nobody's watching. This is one of those assholes who you just know had pornographic postcards. <laughs> you'd take him out to show him to you and you'd be like, hey, you're trying to molest me. And you'd be like, what? I 
it's crazy. I was just doing it. You're trying to molest me. All of a sudden, the lights go on in the alley. Catch a predator guy walks up. All right, get out of here. Get out of here. Say, they said us in a dark the alleyway. Damn you. <laughs> he goes, the, guy, the narrator says, but today there's no way to escape it. And I'm like, let me hear Lucinda coming upstairs. Find out how quickly I can fucking escape it. All right. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> She's light on her feet. Well, because he's like, the porn can come to your home. The porn can come to your office. And I was like, okay, so far, this is just a great ad for porn. You're not selling me away from it. At this Although point. I will say, though, because they put down this list of like, you know, they're like, oh, back in the day, you had to go somewhere to like actually to some like CD shop and buy the porn. But now you can get it. And he goes up on this list. And I was impressed because it's an honest list. I'm like, wow, that's. That's a lot of fun. We do yeah. have a lot of porn. There are so many options. It's a good deal. I, good I deal wanted him to get. I wanted him to get weirdly specific. <laughs> you can get it on the internet. You can get it at Jerry's Bodega on Forty Seventh and Sixth Avenue. <laughs> Sometimes, if you buy a Lucy cigarette, he'll let you go into the booth for free. <laughs> he also says that porn is a phone call away. Yeah. What? Is there an order porn by phone Whoa. service? That has he's has one nine hundred numbers, online. Eli. Yeah, oh, okay. right. But that's not right, porn. Right. That's phone sex. <laughs> that's, that's a totally different that's, thing. That's porn to Mormons, my friends. That's like walking into a strip club and being like, "This look at all this porn." <laughs> It's We're just making light. our podcast here at this strip club. It's all audio. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. A question about this movie's knowledge. They keep using the phrasing, it can come where you work. So oh, yes, I, yes. I don't think the movie knows that come means come. I don't think they know about no, that phone mm -hmm. relationship. Or they're pretending not to. All right, there is one moment in this movie with, that makes me think that maybe they do. Maybe this was all a setup by some of the most brilliant comic minds of all time. Oh, it's a beautiful close on that. <laughs> so... But yeah, now we get the title screen and underneath it, we hear little snippets of former porn users lamenting the day that porn stole their souls and whatnot. One guy says that porn made him angry. And I'm like, hey, buddy, you're doing porn wrong. Can I just tell you? <laughs> <laughs> I only know one person who porn could make angry, but that's because everything can make him angry. <laughs> Now I just want to watch that guy masturbate yeah. and then fly into a murderous rage. It's very obvious rage. who her daddy is. <laughs> and I mean Noah. <laughs> there are so many moments in this where it's just clear they're doing porn wrong. And if you just like, you just showed them like three little tricks for your porn time, they'd be having a way better time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and this is where we get uh, Heath's best worst, right? Because the narrator says, pornography is big business. And we see what appear to be like the fucking... Anchors for the evening porn walking through an <laughs> office building or something. Oh, God, I I love porn office, and I want... <laughs> I wrote and deleted so many sitcoms about porn office. <laughs> it's so it's so good. There's a pool table. Oh, yeah, that was... What? That was my favorite. They, they decided... They were like, we need to characterize evil porn conglomerate yes and they put yes. a pool table in the office like right. straight out of uh, the music man like with a capital t that rhymes with p that stands for porn pool <laughs> both <laughs> porn is pool it looks like a great work environment it's weird it that does it does the porn yeah. industry somehow look better like the weird mormons <laughs> behind this literally couldn't picture ron jeremy if they tried to right <laughs> they were just like it's i don't know the guys them. at the bank <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, they had the they had all the little the clear the glass walls to build trust amongst the team and everything. They actually that made it look like you, you could watch this and just go like, I'd like to go into porn. That looks like a very yeah. nice place. I could be in porn. He's doing yoga together just in <laughs> lunchtime. It's a nice class that they have. It looks like a bank ran out of ideas for like Q three and just started filming Asian <laughs> spit roasts on the side. <laughs> yep. Sure. We've, I mean we've all been there. We have all been there. I loved the, the thinking that went into making this porn office multicultural, right? Because it's by far the most diverse group of people we see in the movie, which means at some point they were getting in there and were like, all right, so we need to cast the porn office. Can't all be white people, right? We should get like a Latino and a 
Well, Can you name an any African other American person. Lamanite? <laughs> should we get a Lamanite representation? Yeah. I don't know. It was, a, it was weird that the Mormons were like, "We need to make sure there's representation in our porn." Office. Well, I mean, I think you're just going the wrong direction. I think that they like they cast it originally, and they're like, "Guys, it can't be all black people and Latinos." Okay, yeah. it's gotta, we got to throw a whitey in there somewhere. And then we watched them sorting through uh, binders full of women, which yes. was yes, yes, which was really kind of right on the nose. Now we know. Where he got him? <laughs> Bunch of headshots, and I feel like that would mean something else in the porn business—the headshots thing. But they're looking at right? literal headshots. Yeah. I don't know. Is that what you would send? Does anybody know? Do you send just a normal headshot? And they're being so respectful. They're just like, oh yeah, no, I think he would be good in the scene. Like, oh yeah, no, this one, yeah, this. Her eyes really pop. Like that's just <laughs> right. doing just like the most casual evaluation oh, of these. This people. guy did uh, several summers at Tanglewood. Did some Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> And the fucking narrator, the narrator goes, millions of dollars are spent to find ways to better entice people into porn. I'm like, dude, no one is spending millions of dollars on the porn that I'm watching. OK, yeah, <laughs> to be fair, we got pictures and videos of people fucking in here has worked forever and will work forever. <laughs> Medium independent. <laughs> When they can download knowledge straight into your brain, the third thing it will be is porn. Also, the first two, yeah. But this is my, okay, as he said, this is maybe my favorite bit of phrasing in the whole fucking movie is where they say that the, the porn industry is trying to trick you into, quote, a world filled with self-gratification that will fill their pockets. Whoa! Whoa! I didn't need that visual. Come on, guys. I want to know what number you got to call for that. <laughs> All right. So then we get the first in our series of porn lies, right? That, that, that this movie is ostensibly going to be built around. So the first lie is one look won't hurt. And this is where we see we see like um one little boy walking down the street and the two other boys are peer pressuring him into uh, looking at boobies. Yeah, or whatever. And, I mean, we're watching a literal clip from my childhood. I'm quite certain. Yes, we are. <laughs> like you find some some kid, you know, Will, in my experience, had one porn and we all gathered in the woods and looked at it for a second and then ran away laughing and pushing each other into the bushes. That was that was how you did porn in the 90s. All I'm saying is uh, any kids standing that close together, there's a cookie in the middle of them. <laughs> that's all that's all i'm gonna say about that yeah let's that's make sure that camera take. doesn't swing around to the left yeah. yeah i mean we had a cookie but i was i was just i was just eating the cookie it wasn't a cum thing and <laughs> well, you, you were just waiting you were just waiting you were just to play waiting okay for them cookie. to be done <laughs> you got you guys gonna finish that <laughs> he was like i mean i'm not gay i'm not gonna jerk off but i'll eat the cookie <laughs> <laughs> it was that yeah <laughs> it was that weird thing though we're like, you had to, because you're, you know, 11 or whatever, and you had to prove constantly, because it was the 90s and everybody's a fucking bigot, you had to prove that you weren't gay, and it was that weird thing where, like, all right, we're looking at ladies in porn, are we supposed to get erections? Is it gay if we don't have erections right now? We, we better check do. each other's erections to be safe. Yeah. <laughs> to see which one of us might be It was be a lot gay. of pressure. I didn't know whether I was supposed to have one or not. I'm trying to, like... Tell myself in my head, go away, erection, go away, erect. It didn't. It's not comfortable. Yeah. I mean, look, far be it from us to join the anti PC crew, but I'll say it right now. Something that we've lost in this whole PC culture is watching porn with your buddies and realizing that you're having a terrible time and you don't know what to do or say. <laughs> okay. I, um, okay. I didn't That's... lose that in the twin in, in 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 this decade. We can do that um, right now, Eli, if you want. Yeah. I always found it was best to talk. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on a Zoom call. That's the most tattoo. All right, so so then we the, you know the narrator is like you know sure you think you can stop jerking off whatever you want but if you don't finish it'll mess up your ability to pee comfortably for a little while and this is when we meet the former porn user that tells us about the porn that he saw once when he was a kid and <laughs> 31 years later is still haunted by this was very upsetting this is <laughs> i think the narrator again Talking about his absurd dark alley experiences. And this time he's like 11 and he's like, yeah, it was the best. Walking down the sidewalk, I saw a um, heavily used porn magazine off to the side of the sidewalk and I picked it up and uh, it didn't go well. Didn't go well. For me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? 
But yeah, 31 years later, I want to watch that porn. Right? <laughs> right? Right? Tell us what you saw, man. I get I get bored halfway through a clip. This dude's got 31 years worth of memory from a magazine page. I just want to know what crime he committed. I want them to be like, so what got you in here? And he's just like, oh, insider trading. I mean, the porn was definitely a gateway. Yeah, no, we'll we'll, we'll get to that. But yeah, this guy winds up being a convict eventually. I'm pretty sure I still have an old penthouse magazine from like 1991 somewhere. I think I still own it. Fun times. Interesting that you would decide to share that with us, Heath. It was from France. Somebody oh, went to France well, and there, got it for me. There, well, there That's not porn, my friend. That's culture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, it was hoped. Thank you. I yeah, do have a lot of questions about who you were as a person that someone went to France and they were like, ah, I got to get a gift for he. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bring he. Um, yeah, well, that's accurate. That's what happened. <laughs> one, one of my best friends. <laughs> All right, so then the narrator cuts in to tell us the awful truth. The stuff that you see in those porn videos, that ain't real at all, (laughs) y'all. It's not even how sex works. Lesbians (laughs) don't jam their vaginas against (laughs) each other. And they can't decide (laughs) whether or not this is a porn shoot or a commercial because they're like, Porn is just like this commercial shoot. And so then the girl's like, where's my money for doing porn? Because like <laughs> they forgot to communicate because the, the narrator was like, I'm not going to describe my cousin's sister as doing porn. This is a commercial shoot. But they in the actual shoot pretended that it was a porn. So <laughs> the just the perspectives are wonky. Yeah, I don't I don't think the people involved in that part of the documentary knew what they were being filmed for. No, I don't think the people who made the documentary were aware. Like, I hate to break it to you guys. That commercial for fucking Ann Taylor Loft that you had going here, that was not a porn shoot. And they get get so fucking minute on the details. They're just like, makeup can be used to alter one's appearance. Like, And it occurred to me, like, in fairness to this movie, I can see how porn could be destructive if you literally don't know how a motion picture works. If you you do not have the like the level of cognitive awareness to like understand that the thing in the box isn't real, yeah, no, that giant penis is about to come on me. Yeah, (laughs) it's just a Mormon watching Oculus Quest porn for the first time, batting away. Get out of my house! (laughs) Yeah, it's fucking, it's fucking wild. They're talking of they're they're explaining how like makeup works. They're explaining how like. You can't see everything outside of the frame of the camera. They are moments away from being like, this is a lamp. Without it, yeah. you wouldn't even be <laughs> able to see this whore's That's not body. even the sun. Well, the guy's actual <laughs> words are, pornography is founded on the delusion that what is portrayed is real. And I'm like, dude, before I watched this, I watched porn where a woman grew to the size of a building and shoved a man in her vagina. Okay? Oh, giantess porn. Yeah. Yes. Like, come on, give me a fucking break. I have yeah. questions. Eli jerks off the nine dick demons fucking naughty Japanese cat elves. That's not <laughs> being portrayed. Did you know porn you know? isn't like that in real life? Those are actors. <laughs> yeah. I knew that. Like, <laughs> this movie could be about pro wrestling without changing anything. It could, again, it could be heroin, pro wrestling. You could just change words. This movie could be about Steamboat Willie. Like, it's literally, <laughs> it is literally just about the difference between reality and movie yes, cinema. Yes. Well, and I love that they thought they were like, some kid is going to be watching this and he's going to be like, well, fuck, now that I know they use lighting and makeup, I'll never watch porn again. <laughs> right. The narrator goes, great effort is taken to make the pornography attractive. And I'm like, OK, well, now I'm going to close fucking wide open yeah. hairy buttholes dot com because it feels like you're judging. Me. <laughs> Are those union fucking carpenters? Union? <laughs> really? Honestly, if this is what porn does to them, Avatar's going to blow their fucking dicks off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have one other question about this scene. There's a waterfall that they make. Mm-hmm. They don't use. What? They do not. I need to know how they use that waterfall. How do, like so there's supposed to be a porn shoot and there's this very small waterfall but were they gonna like do like camera angle stuff to make it a full-size waterfall or something there was also white 
panels. Because as we suggested in the sketch that we opened this episode with, no one who made this movie could admit that they'd seen porn and that porn consists of people putting their bits together. So they were like, <laughs> oh, my wife's here. Ah, what is porn? I, I assume it's a series of white Waterfalls. panels. And waterfalls, waterfalls and, probably. This and is not woman. from a Last of the Mohicans porn that I've seen. That is not. <laughs> it is not from Put Your Balls on My Chin Gatch Gook. That is different. <laughs> it's a. It's that, and it's a lady in a somewhat modest sundress looking into the camera. Right, oh. hun? I don't know. I love you. Yeah, and oh, we should <laughs> we should explain the story of this poor model, right? Because very clearly, like this model came in because they were they needed like something that was going to look like a porn set. So they're like, ah, well, you know, we'll hire a model and bring her in. And then, like somewhere along the line, when somebody picked her up from the fucking airport or whatever, they were like, now this is for a Mormon thing, and you're Mormon, so you're going to do it for half price, right, or something like that. Because over and over again, they show shots of this woman turning directly to camera and saying, hey, there's a problem with my rate. Can we can we settle this real quick before I do any modeling for you people? And they kept all of that in the movie. Well, it's either that or they were like, all right, what's really going to turn people against porn? I know. What if they find out the women are only in it for the money? <laughs> <laughs> have, have some love for the game. God damn it. Yeah, they were literally like, what's the worst thing about porn? The paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> How paid everyone is. Yeah, the bureaucracy, right. <laughs> am I right? <laughs> it's the lack of passion in the workforce, I'll tell you. <laughs> Where's porn's Meryl Streep, right? <laughs> Where's their Danny Trejo doing some student film in the middle of nowhere because he likes the script? I'll tell you, he doesn't exist because porn's a great fucking lie. Put it in the movie. It's socialist. That's what it is. <laughs> the best fucking part is like at the very end where the narrator tries to like wrap it all up into one salient point, And he's like, what you see isn't always the reality. And they show the before and after. And it's just her and then her wearing makeup. That is yep. literally <laughs> fucking yep. it. Like, okay, yes. the moral of this movie is that once you contour your cheeks, your soul is Satan's fuck doll. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the horror of Babylon. Well, I'll tell you what, I think we can all agree that we're incapable of escaping the need to watch porn right now. So, you know, what with all of our addictions and whatnot. Step ahead so of you, Noah. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll dive into even more pornography. The greatest lie. Hey, folks, just dropping in to tell you about a new podcast that's sponsoring us this week, Truth vs. Hollywood. It's a new show from Audio Boom that looks at movies based on true stories and examines just how true they are. Truth vs. Hollywood is hosted by podcast veterans David Chen and Joanna Robinson, who go into these movies in depth, not in the, you know, we read the IMDb trivia page for it way that you're used to us doing on this show. Not only do they do their research, but they also include excerpts from interviews with writers, journalists, historians, and people who were really there. Their first episode just debuted, and they're opening up on one of the greatest gangster movies ever made, and thus one of the greatest movies ever made, Goodfellas. The first episode doesn't even get you through the first act, but I learned a ton, and of course, I had to go back and watch Goodfellas again to get ready for the next episode. Anyway, it's a show I'd recommend trying out if you're a fan of movies or of history, and maybe some of the great movies that they're talking about over there can help balance out some of the awful ones that we make you learn about here. Anyway, look for Truth vs. Hollywood wherever you get your podcasts, or check the link in the show notes and now back to the show all right gents the folks can't get enough of this pornography we're slinging here at pornography inc but we need ideas more ideas what do you got fellas give it to me uh, okay uh, what if it's uh, like a uh, uh, taxi and then they fuck i love it make it its own website uh, okay i got one uh what if the porn stars pretend to be uh newscasters and and people I oh, know they jerk off on him, like while they read the news. Weirdly specific, but okay, okay, make it happen. Um, okay, you guys know the show Pawn Stars? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's Pawn Stars, but then they fuck. God damn it. Um, that's a fucking great idea. Right? Pawn Stars. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the one. That's the ticket. Everything we just said is a real porn. Yep. This skit could have been so goddamn long. <laughs> <laughs> 
And we're back in the opening third of the movie. We discussed the first lie, the one where it said, you know, one look won't hurt you. And that's demonstrably true. But now it's time for lie number two, which appears to be two looks won't hurt you. <laughs> like, wow, are we just going to keep going up from there? And yes, we are. Yeah. By the way. This is where people start listing the side effects of porn. He's like, I started to hate myself. I had thoughts of suicide. And I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure that doesn't have anything to do with the porn, guys. Okay. I mean, that, that tracks with Eli, but that's just anecdotal. <laughs> like, what porn is this guy watching that's causing suicidal thoughts? Well, but it's not. Look, it's the fucking religion, right? That's the problem. He's like, I hated myself for being hypocritical. And I'm like, well, yeah, so you could either give up porn or give up being a hypocrite. Yeah, you don't have to, like, watch porn in public to stop being a hypocrite. You can just admit that you watch porn in private. Yeah, you know how everyone takes aspirin and everyone's headache goes away, but you watch porn and you want to kill yourself. Do you get what I'm saying here? It's not a universal thing. Jesus. And then I guess we've, we're done with that lie because we move quickly to our next lie, which is it's not a big deal, right? And this is where we hear from a woman who ruined an otherwise seemingly functional relationship because she found out that he'd watched porn. Yeah. It wasn't until I threatened to divorce him that he agreed to make a change. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. just, he's, he's just like, oh, you know what I just realized? Now that you get half my shit and take my children away from me, I have an illness. Don't Google it. You can't Google it. Please don't. <laughs> it's real. It's very real. The best part is that, like, they shoot it with just him and his family, like, playing on a swing set. And then, like, when he loses his family, they disappear and he's just on the swing. Like, he's just the weird porn watching ghost of the playground forever now <laughs> hey uh dave i heard your wife kicked you out of the house yeah but you know i live on this swing. free country can't stop me from coming to this playground is this where he shows back up at, at his house and he's got his golf bag yeah. and the mm -hmm. wife is like yeah i know you weren't fucking golfing you were watching porn at the country club <laughs> and like throws it in his face like she, like like she unzips the golf bag and Mia Khalifa pops out. <laughs> <laughs> Just grabs Mia Khalifa and throws her at his face. Yeah. I, I don't know what they're going for here. Yeah. They have this fucking big porn fight reenactment. And they also they sneak in another of the lies at this point that it comes up on screen and says, lie, I can stop any time. And again, yeah, you do, you want to go all the way through it. Just don't just stop in the middle. That's it, yeah. it's uncomfortable. This is where they say that pornography is just as bad as drugs. So I wrote in my notes, question, if you suck a dick for porn, do you still need it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the dick or the porn? Um, <laughs> all right. So here. Okay. And then we get the moment that convinces me that just maybe, maybe this is the product of of the greatest comic genius that has ever and will ever live, right? Oh, yeah. Because this is the part where the narrator goes like, you know, they have to put warnings on cigarettes and, you know, bleach and shit. What warning would they put on porn? And as he's saying that, <laughs> we're panning over like we got an extreme close-up on some warning, right, on some chemical or something like that. But the little snippets we see could not have been more brilliantly chosen for their comic effect. Here's what we get. I shit you not. Blindness if swallowed, right? <laughs> contains petroleum distillates. Yep. yep, I saw that one. <laughs> what are we talking? Motor oil? I, what, <laughs> what? I, I don't know. Well, we, we, maybe because also we had if skin irritation develops. <laughs> <laughs> In case of eye contact, continue rinsing eyes for dot, dot, dot. And finally, the fucking David Carradine special, if ventilation is inadequate, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> oh, man. It seems like they answered their own question. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. That is some next level accidental humor right Was that there. Agent Orange? I can't. I'm trying to figure out what they're describing there. I mean, to be fair, you shouldn't rub porn in your eyes. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. No. You shouldn't. He's just going through everything in his home right now. Just like, what the fuck has petroleum in it? What would that be? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then the movie lays down a few more of those consequences of porn watching. We hear from a guy, again, not a problem with porn here. We hear from a guy who was excommunicated from his church and, in his words, almost lost his marriage because of the porn. He wasn't allowed 
in the church were his daughter's wedding. Yes, yes. I just got to say that, that was an awkward wedding. Steve Wallacher, thank you so much for coming. Are you kidding me? Me and the family wouldn't miss Denise's special day. Well, it means the world to us that you came. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. All right, well, we'll see you in there. <laughs> well? So, uh, sorry, what? Well, what? Ah, uh, you won't. You won't actually see me in there. I'm not uh, not going to be in the wedding. But you're, but you're right here. Why, why, you're not going to be in your daughter's wedding? Mm, yeah, afraid not. W why not? Ah, well, mm. porn? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, porn? Pornography. Yeah, uh, my wife caught me watching some pornography, and so now I just got to, you know, wait outside. But take lots of pictures, though, because I can't wait to see my little girl get married on the pictures wow. and oh, videos. Okay, man. Take. Wow. I'm, I'm super sorry to hear that. Yep. Yeah. Me too. Me. Me too. What kind mm. of porn was it? Oh, is that an Asian lady newscaster porn? Asian lady newscaster porn. Sure, yeah. Got it. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see you at the reception. Yeah, you'll see you there. I mean, that's, I mean I think, like, that right? would have had to happen, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is what they're trying to sell us, yes. That's when you drop in through the ceiling like Mission Impossible. And Hell, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Missionary Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we hear from, uh, you know, several youngsters who got roped in by the porns. You know, we hear a bunch of little like one sentence snippets from kids saying stuff like, I sure wish my parents had invaded my privacy more. You know, it's it's so bad. I stopped praying and going to church, you know, all of that shit. I want to talk about my favorite one here, which is the kid who was like, I was checking on my email and I saw a username I didn't recognize. And I just wanted to pick. <laughs> I wanted to flash cut to this kid's room where he was like, I don't know anyone named come on my face. Sixty nine. <laughs> I guess I'll open it up and see. My favorite was the Cartman looking kid who was just like, there was, because all the other kids were apologetic. And then this one fucking kid just looked straight into the camera and was like, yeah, I watched it. Fuck you, want. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you remember this kid? I'm not, I'm yes. not misremembering this. Yeah, fucking ground my feet into baby. his fucking couch. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think his exact line was more just like, all the kids were watching it. What's the big deal? But he said it with this tone, like, you, this is this kid's going places. Probably therapy and eventually suicide, but honestly, that is the best outcome any of those kids are getting. <laughs> also, Noah, you mentioned this briefly, but the porn made one kid not want to go to church? What weird new atheist porn have I been missing out on? <laughs> and if I haven't been missing out on it, can we start making it? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. That's the fucking question. <laughs> Yeah, I also want to see Richard Dawkins in porn. I agree with you, Eli. You've never seen all those videos of Sam Harris sucking his own dick? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> They're all I can find on YouTube when I search his name. <laughs> I was, I'm just saying, Anthony Magnabosco is already cameraed up for a porn. All I have to do is catch him in an agreeable mood, and we can make this genre happen. <laughs> Skeet epistemology. <laughs> well done. Fantastic. All right. And so then we, okay, so we cut back to that guy who's still haunted by the 1985 porn he saw as a kid. And to his credit, there was a lot of bush back then. It was pretty scary. And he tells the, his porn anecdote. You know, this is the one where he's talking about like, uh, you know, I was going to get the porn and my five year old asked me where I was going. And I, I couldn't just get, say, you know, I'm going to get porn. So I had to lie to him, right? That, that's, that's the, Terrible consequence okay. of porn. Okay. Actually, I don't think he lies to him. He just drives away. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I couldn't tell him the truth, but he's not like, Daddy's going to the supermarket, go back inside. He just like stares the kid down and floors it. <laughs> 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 he just leaves this fucking kid in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they, that's what they show us. But I'm quite certain this guy literally got caught masturbating in his car by his five-year-old son. <laughs> right, yeah, okay. And the kid was like, can you come to my t-ball game? And he's like, it's buffering, go away. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> or if not, and he did just drive away during hard eye contact, you know that five-year-old like watched him pull out of the driveway and was like, 
Hey, he's getting to porn. He's getting porn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look at pieces of paper when I say I didn't for a living. You watch. <laughs> he says he's a, he didn't care who he hurt with his porn anymore. He was willing to run errands willy nilly despite his son's curiosity. And then he says, and I quote, it wasn't until I was incarcerated that I realized how bad my <laughs> porn addiction had gotten. Um, I feel like we skipped over a whole goddamn fucking seven <laughs> episode Tiger King arc there, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching porn in my driveway. Next thing you know, I'm sucking dicks in a dark alley to watch movies of people sucking dicks <laughs> in a dark alley. <laughs> Wait, so is the inference here that the porn he was addicted to was child porn because that's the porn you go to jail for and if so don't lump that into your anti-porn documentary right i imagine utah you could go to jail for just anything <laughs> yeah, or, or just anything yeah oh are you fucking kidding there's absolutely no way they would have leaned into that this movie had to kill in the lives in compounds demographic <laughs> <laughs> They were never going... That might be the one porn they allowed. This is, they were never going to step on that. <laughs> and again, like, he fucking... He went to jail for failure to pay child support or some shit, probably. <laughs> they don't imply... Or, you know, they, they never say... Or even imply that he went to jail for porn. Only that, like, I guess while he was in jail he getting, and couldn't get any porn that he realized how bad it was or something, right? Yeah, this was very clearly a guy who went to jail for something, like got arranged, got brought to court, and the judge was like, how do you plead? And he was just like, porn. <laughs> the porn did it? Is that a thing? I don't know. The porn did it, Your Honor. Do you remember when we let a guy kill Harvey Milk and then he said, I ate junk food yesterday and we let him go? I want uh, that defense with porn. <laughs> I want that, but with the touch myself. I was eating salty stuff instead, yeah. <laughs> And people were like keistering porn to get porn into this jail for the black market <laughs> to sell it that they couldn't couldn't get otherwise. And what's great is he clearly got convicted, but now he has to maintain that defense for appeal anyway. So every day he's just like, yeah, that that porn <laughs> <laughs> took everything I had. <laughs> All right, so now the narrator is going to explain the long, twisted road that leads to Pornhub Premium. Sure, <laughs> you think you're in control, but pretty soon you lose hold of the handle, and then you're at the emergency room having a pair of chattering teeth surgically removed from your rectum. It happens to all of us. We think this is going to be a simple, fun time with our friends. If you VPN through Italy, you get free Pornhub Premium right now, just for the record. Oh, fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. <laughs> hey, sure. Everyone starts out just watching one porn at dinner, or you only watch porn at parties with friends. Wrong. Pornography is like spoiled milk because your brain can't vomit. Oh, my God. I, I have, I, yeah, I, I have, my only note on that was literally like I took out a little note. Like, I don't even know where I got it. I took out a little notepad from my pocket and I was just like, Brain can't vomit. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he goes, pornography is That's good. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. He goes, pornography is worse than filthy, polluted food. And I'm like, dude, don't have a fucking swallowing what? analogy. What the fuck are you doing Where here? Where the man? fuck is he going with this? My brain was paralyzed for a second. But mm -hmm. like, it was paralyzed in that way where it almost made sense out of it. I was like, your stomach can puke food. Your brain Hold can't vomit. Ah, oh, you fucking Mormons. No. Uh, <laughs> dick vomit. It's dick vomit. You got me again. <laughs> and then the fucking, the, the guy, the addict, right? The incarcerated 30-year porn addict or whatever. He comes up to explain that he started using cocaine and alcohol to enhance the pornography. He did cocaine <laughs> To enhance the point, that is not how. Let me let me tell you some. I don't know a lot about a lot, but I know a lot about your dick not working on coke. Let me tell you. You don't, you don't enjoy a nice uh, soft jerk. <laughs> you got, you guys have never had like a quiet night at home, done a line of coke, then settled in for a cozy night of ripping your fucking dick off. <laughs> right. Oh man. Christ. I have a hot take that might be controversial. If you're using cocaine and alcohol to enhance your porn, you're doing literally all three of those things. 
I'm sorry. I like a little bit of a challenge in my masturbation. <laughs> I like to think of it as watching porn on hard mode. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to try and solve this Rubik's Cube <laughs> with the same color stickers on all sides. Ooh, Eli, that does not work to put it on hard mode. <laughs> all right, well, the record. now I'm in the mood for cocaine and porn. That fucks everything up. So we're going to pause for a quick break while I sort this shit out. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Who is her daddy? Does she, in fact, like that? How am I going to pay for all this pizza? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the money shot of pornography. The great lie. Excuse me, ma'am. Did you happen to order a large sausage pizza? I did, but I don't have any money to pay. Oh, well, let me ask you this. Have you ever considered the problem of evil? The what? Oh, it's, it's the concept that the idea of a benevolent god can't easily be reconciled with stuff like, you know, baby cancer and tornadoes. Oh, well, um, like free will and stuff. Right, right. Uh, I mean, free will is philosophically problematic as a concept, but it's not like free will accounts for baby cancer, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess not. So... Yeah. Anyway, uh, this sausage I have here. Oh, good. It's your penis. It is my penis, yes. And we're back for more of this shit. When we last left off, our hero was tempting Christians away from the righteous path one ejaculation at a time. And we're going to rejoin the narrator begging us to, you know, just say no. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, we, we're, at this point, we see a kid playing Xbox. Is there porn on that? Yes, there yeah, is. man. This kid's so addicted to porn, he's playing it again just for the achievements. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at 99%. I don't understand how to get the, the last porn point. <laughs> what? It also says pornography destroys your ability to see beauty. And I'd like to argue for the opposite being true. I have very often finished jerking off to porn and then been like, all right, I'm going to go to an online museum site or something just so that this wasn't my day. <laughs> there we go. Look, there you go. Guggenheim.com. See, I was looking at the fucking flowers. It was still your day. Well, yeah. <laughs> I genuinely had that moment literally two nights ago. I was watching porn and I finished and I was just like, I should read poetry. <laughs> yes, thank you. And I looked thank up, you, I Moishy. shit you not, I looked up fucking Keats. <laughs> I would need, all right, Keats is the answer for the second part of my question. What porn were you watching before Keats? Oh, that's not fun. Yeah, what me. porn, yeah, what <laughs> porn pairs well with Keats? Oh, you know everybody wants to know what porn we watch. I, I would rather not get into that conversation. Um, me three. <laughs> <laughs> I would Patriot. like to talk about this. Yeah, it's, it's, no, that's behind the paywall. I know you guys. would. I know uh, you would. <laughs> so there's this guy with a taxi, but there's a twist. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so, all right. He also, the narrator also says that at a certain point, numbness sets in. I'm like, well, I have not jerked off enough yet then. <laughs> well, you're not doing enough cocaine with it. <laughs> yeah. You get a tolerance. You got to start injecting the porn at a certain point. I was going to say, rub, rub enough coke on your dick, man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and this is where we get the wife doing the overview. And she says that him watching porn, quote, broke down every hope I ever had. And I wrote in my notes, damn. All of your hopes were him not jerking off to porn then. <laughs> she says it destroyed every dream I had for my family. I'm like, wow, those are some bizarrely contingent dreams, lady. <laughs> Did they also say that there are long-term effects of, like, porn use? Yes. Like, it's a drug? Like, yep. hairy palms yeah. and shit, apparently? Like, like dick COPD? <laughs> You'll or need like glasses what? at a certain point. They repeat the brain shrinking lie here, which is very popular. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Is that during is that during the chick who looks like the hot ghost of Emily Dickinson? <laughs> yes, one, it like, is. yes, it is. The one yes, like, is, just Jason. rocking in her fucking rocking chair. Yeah. <laughs> and and she almost squishes her cat's foot with the rocking chair and it came <laughs> so close and the cat oh, God, runs away and that. probably attacked yeah. her a moment later. Yeah, that yeah. cat didn't sign up for any of this. There's also an amazing quote where they go, as one expert says, 
not which expert. They're not even bothering to name nope. their fake expert. A great They're just philosopher once <laughs> said. <laughs> Porn is bad. <laughs> I love to. There's this weird moment where the narrator's telling us about our sexual urges. And as he's saying that, we're watching a, this very fit young black man brush his teeth. And I'm like, boy, did this movie nail Heath's kink. It's like the, the <laughs> okay. odds of it nailing that so close are. Okay. Uh, first of all, yes, but that's not the point. I, I was very confused by this for a second. Not sexually, just confused as a movie watcher. He he starts brushing his teeth and then he sees himself in the mirror and he's like, hold on a second. Like, what? what was, was he about to use toothpaste as lube or like what? So I think what happens here is that he looks in the mirror and sees a masturbator, right? Like, that's yeah. what we're supposed to be watching. <laughs> Doesn't recognize himself anymore. He's like, <laughs> Pornhub, Pornhub, Pornhub. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the narrator says, Porn will tell you it heightens arousal and improves relationships. And I'm like, you know what? I, I've never read the brochure, so I don't know if that's true or not. Like, why is porn selling itself to you? It's already porn. We got naked ladies in here. Also, <laughs> it improves arousal. All right, now I'm listening. How will it be? But tell me this, Mr. Porn Esquire. How will it affect my relationships? Oh, well, you say. Lead the way, sir. Yeah, no. Well, but, but according to the narrator here, it deadens the relationship with real women. And he somehow manages to refrain from adding Heath. <laughs> well, what I love about this, right, is that this, this again, is a very popular anti-porn myth based entirely on the idea that, like, I'm telling you, once you see Asa Akira getting back to the fucking horse farm that is your wife, you just can't do it. You'd rather put a bullet in your fucking eye, I'll tell you right now. You're going to want to watch Asa Akira horse farm instead. It's a whole... <laughs> exactly. Change Roo. Well, but so, but he says, the guy says, like, Porn made my wife boring to me sexually, right? Which, yeah. like, I mean, yeah, sure, maybe that, but, like, it's it's given me and my wife some crazy fucking ideas we never would have come up with on our own. So, again, the problem here is your attitude vis-a-vis -vis porn, not the porn. Yeah, I feel like the first take of that guy was just him being like, honestly, if my wife had just stuck a finger in my ass more than once per year, none of us would be here right now. <laughs> I never would have got incarcerated. <laughs> I almost certainly would not have strangled that hooker. <laughs> oh, God. Just saying, outfit stuff doesn't what even else? feel different. You're just wearing a different <laughs> thing. Yeah, right. But over and over again, when they actually do identify a real problem, invariably, it is a problem with religion's attitude towards pornography. Right? Like, look, if you wanted to do a legitimate problems with pornography documentary, you could. They didn't want to do that, so they didn't. Mm -mm. No, right. that would mean talking to women, which obviously no one involved with this movie <laughs> ever did. <laughs> and then we learn the most important truth about porn. Right? Because, like, up until now, the, the movie keeps coming up and saying, lie, you know, whatever. You know, lie, you can stop whenever you want, whatever. Now it's going to start coming up and saying, truth, whatever. And the most important truth is that porn will make you reject God. Yeah. And and to demonstrate this, by the way, we see a teenage boy refusing to take communion because he's like, I can't put my jerk off hand on Jesus's flesh. It would just feel weird. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Porn's a gateway drug to science. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. If she evolved to be more attractive. Oh, you know what? I don't believe in God anymore. <laughs> Hold on. Why is there still cum? What? <laughs> I was told God made the bot, the human body absolutely perfect, but that asshole looks way too wide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is also where they tell you that if you get caught up in pornography, talk to your parents. And man, do I have so much pity for the normal Utahns whose kid listened to this movie and came home and was like, Mom, Dad, I've got something to tell you about. Big booty bitches. And they had to be like, oh, okay. No, I know we got to fix this, but man, this is bad. Six or seven. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> same, same problem. 
Yeah, it's just like, uh, that's one of its truths. It's like, talk to someone. It'll help. And I'm like, yeah, maybe they'll want to, like, just jerk off back to back with you or fuck you even. And if they fuck you, you've solved all your problems. <laughs> But as soon as they said that, they're like, perhaps you could talk to your parents. I'm like, oh, I hope that happens to Eli. I really hope that happens to Eli. Oh, no. (laughs) And then it it, it comes up and says, like, truth, you can flee from pornography. And I was really expecting like a fucking porn (laughs) chase scene at this point because we saw porn (laughs) stalking the little family outside earlier. But no. Oh, man. I wanted there to be like an old kung fu master who is just like, sure, you can flee from pornography. But if you do, you'll be running the rest of your life. (laughs) (laughs) The only real way to end this is to kill pornography. You must confront it once. Mm -hmm. Cut to Kurt Cameron with his baseball bat. Right, exactly. (laughs) That's exactly what I was thinking. Snatch this cum from my hand. Too slow. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's Simba having to go back to face Scar, but just porn. Oh, and then we get this. Um, we 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 hear this letter that some Mormon kid wrote before he went on his mission about how he was so into the porn that for a while he thought that he wasn't going to be able to serve God by going out and advertising Mormonism for him for free for several years. But luckily, he told his parents, and his parents told an unqualified stranger. <laughs> oh, that's so fucking creepy, right? Because they show the fucking, this kid, they show a kid going in to talk to some elderly man about his jerking off. Like, that's the creepiest thing about all of this to me, is that what the Mormons want is for you to go in and talk to a fucking grown-ass man about you touching yourself. Yeah, that's a super real fucking thing in the Mormon church, right? Like, oh, you yeah. You have to do that. They, they oh, literally, yeah. like make you talk about your masturbatory habits with like Steve. Well, and and what's more is that like Steve at like Steve brings it the fuck up. Right. And Steve will continue to bring it up until you give him a good story. And like, he'll be like, all right, must not be jerking off yet. I'll ask again in three months. Hey, Steve, can you uh, inch your chair back away from me? You're sitting real <laughs> close. Right. <laughs> and a reminder, the year that they started allowing parents into those rooms was Two years ago. Yep. Two Get years ago, you were here. allowed to be like, hey, you keep asking my kid about jerking off. Can I sit in? Yeah. <laughs> 2018, they decided on that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Great. And then the the next little truth that comes up on screen says, truth, pornography is more powerful than you think. And I'm just like, <laughs> it can turn invisible. It can fly. <laughs> a super porn. <laughs> You've never reached into your porn and pulled out a glowing sword you used to defeat the dragon of darkness? You're doing it wrong, Noah. That's why you subscribe to Premium, because you get the sword. Oh, right, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> and then, oh, so, like, the missionary kid who's writing the letter or whatever, he ends it by saying, like, but then I gave up the pornography, and now I can go off and be a missionary, and I darn it, I won't even have to use the Book of Mormon to hide my weird boner anymore. It'll be great. It'll be great. That kid's name, Joe Exotic. <laughs> and credit where credit is due. Hello, can I tell you about how Jesus helped my pornography addiction? Is the only opening line that is worse than can I tell you about the Book of Mormon? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some kid comes to me with that fucking that opening, and I'm going to be like, yeah, man, sit the fuck down and tell me all about it. <laughs> but then we learn that that nobody can masturbate for you. And that's true, right? Like, that's like, <laughs> not true. Dutch rudder, man. I gotta oh, say, man, oh, right, that was okay. such a bummer to find out. <laughs> <laughs> but they come up and they're like, you know, ultimately the choice is yours. You can't, like, no one can make you look at porn. I'm like, I, I probably could trick you into it, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, I have, a, I have a bunch of foolish friends who have jumped on Zoom calls with me who can verifiably say that I can make <laughs> them watch porn. <laughs> It's my virtual background, so I don't know what the <laughs> fuck you're talking about. Yes, but yeah, exactly. Then he has the fucking Smokey the Bear. Only you can not watch porn. Fuck, it doesn't work when it's a negative thing, kind of a moment there. And then, it's, again, the phrasing of this fucking movie, right? He goes, the internet may still be at your fingertips, but they're still your fingers. Oh, I wrote, a, I wrote a whole fucking note on fingers. 
They're just your tiny slender <laughs> Do what you want with them. Well, maybe don't. I don't. I gotta take a bit. I gotta take a minute. Somebody else do the narrating. Ow, I wrenched it. I wrenched it. It's, uh, it was just my fault. That's uh, on me. Bill, I need a day off. All I can think about are these kids' fucking fingers. <laughs> So the narrator comes in and he goes, you may think you're only exercising your freedom, which is exactly what I'm calling it from now on. So, <laughs> You've been in the bathroom for a while. Yep, just exercising my freedom. <laughs> the whole thing is so weird, too, because it it this monologue happens over this slideshow of the kids. Yeah, so it's like this. It's like a weird mashup of the legal at the end of a Viagra commercial, like overlaid <laughs> onto an in memoriam for the kids at your high school who killed themselves that year. Like it's just the weirdest <laughs> genre bending. Yeah, no, it, it it had this weird like multiracial, you know, kids of all races and ethnicities cannot masturbate moment to it. Yeah, <laughs> and then the narrator goes. Some of your so-called friends, and it immediately cuts to the black kid. Yes. Did you guys catch that? <laughs> Without missing a fucking beat, the one black kid is on that line. Some of your so-called friends might seduce you to watch, and this kid's just like, "Wait, I thought, I thought I was just another one of the good ones." God I'm damn confused. it! You get a photo negative of the Lamanite for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they had the photo negative, but they cut it because the kid looked too white. Well, yeah, right. They didn't apply it anymore for them. All right, that's confused, and we're going to confuse people with that. <laughs> and they also, at this point, they offer a few of their suggested solutions for overcoming your porn addiction, one of which is, I shit you not, just never be alone. <laughs> all right, that one tracks. I feel like, like tracks. Spend, spend time with your mom. Spend time with your loved ones. Hey, mom, can you sit with me till this boner goes away? Sounds a whole lot like a lot of porn I've watched. <laughs> yeah, and then, of course, the final truth that we learn from the movie, it comes up and says, truth, hope is found in Christ. And I'm like, I found hope in all kinds of different shit, man. She's uh, She gets around. Found a lot of things in hope, too. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where they find their catchphrase for the movie. That is real. That is is true, but they keep repeating it and it gets more and more desperate as the movie goes on. By the end, he's like, that is real. That is true, Stephanie. God, I can't stop thinking about these fucking fingers. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to look at a picture of Doubting Thomas again, damn it. <laughs> Where do you guys hold your fingers normally? What's a normal finger position? So, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> And then it urges us one last time to talk to our parents about porn. And I thought at that point in the movie, I had this weird desire to just like call my mom, right? And go, hey, mom, <laughs> I was just taking the advice of this movie. You and I should talk about porn and just like maybe get that on, like, like get it recorded for you guys. I don't know. I, I decided. Sure, that. Absolutely. Do you, do you guys think your parents watch porn? I can tell you this much. My very first pornographic, like, anything from a magazine or from print was I was like 10 or 11 years old and my mom used to get Red Book. Do you guys know Red Book magazine? Are you serious right now? I'm 100% serious and I would take... I you like I'm, the Home Lifestyle magazine? Yes. Red Book? Yes, but they had Please like... Please go ahead. But they had... You know what? I want to bail out now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I need to know what you jerked off to in Red Book. What it's, it is happening? Absolutely a castle. Like, Boy, she's just like... <laughs> Sconces, look at these sconces. <laughs> the, the irony is what I was going to say to defend myself doesn't sound that good in my head anymore. Which is that it has. Well, it, couldn't, it could not possibly would be worse than what we're thinking you were about to say. It had, those like, it had those like 10 tips to make your man go wild. <laughs> but it would describe them and like, yeah, but it would like describe them. It was like a Cosmo kind of thing. Yeah, right, right. Okay. But it would describe them in detail. It'd be like, like I remember, like the words they would never use the word penis. They'd use the they was always inner thigh or member inner thigh. It was always mm -hmm. they never said penis or genitals. They always said inner thigh. It would be like put your head between his inner thighs. 
<laughs> and like, and like, just and whatever you're supposed to take. <laughs> you know what? I take it back. I like Red Book sex tips. But for, the, for the longest time, I was like, I had no idea the inner thigh was the most erotic zone. <laughs> More she's just going to town on some girl's outer thigh. Wait, I think I might have read this wrong. I don't know. Is it is it my inner or your inner? Who's your stage? Turn around. Stage, Turn around. Stage inner or, or house inner? He's just sitting at home playing his inner thighs like a bongo. Nope, still nothing. <laughs> And this is also where we get the voiceover from the wife who's forgiven her porn addict husband. And she says, I love my husband and he's worth super duper long pause <laughs> worth being married to. Yes. <laughs> wow. She had so little good to say that the best she it's could like she land was describing on was like, Heath eh. on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this is the moment that crystallized porn in the Mormon community for me. Because the thing I realize is like, this is just how Mormons get blowjobs from their wives. They're just like, gosh, babe. I mean, I would hate to turn on the computer and accidentally sacrifice our family's place in Heavenly Father's celestial kingdom. But I get it. You've got a headache. So like, fuck it, right? Like, this is just, le porn is just leverage. Oh, wow. You're probably right. That's so fucking sad. Maybe, uh, maybe put your mouth on my inner thigh. I don't know. <laughs> Do you want Anything. me to be separated from our heavenly family? Because that's what's going to happen if I finish this <laughs> fucking video. Do you want me to be at our daughter's wedding or not? <laughs> so fucking get, fucking get naked and get between my inner thighs. <laughs> and then it concludes with him saying that someday he'll tell his son about betraying him through pornography. And that is the only conversation worse than talking to your parents about porn is your parents <laughs> talking to you about porn. Just like, hey, kiddo, look, you're 11 now. So um, let me tell you about the time your mom kicked me out of the house for a week. Yeah, so, so they're not actually newscasters. That's the first thing you need to understand. It's confusing because it's not like translated. You don't know who they are. So and then, OK, so and then the movie closes on this Book of Mormon quote. And I just I love this so fucking much because the Book of Mormon is so goddamn awful. Right. It's the worst book ever written. And it's. So long and convoluted that they it takes them two screens to get the whole goddamn thing up. <laughs> There's nothing being said there at all. It's mm. like it's it, it's so convoluted. But by the time you get to the end of it, you're like, yeah, no, the Bible's too good for this. Right? <laughs> wow. It's like just it, it's literally it's a Bible quote that's somehow even more con convoluted and even less profound. I will say that tight as a dish is a pretty sweet porn. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. The Book of Mormon is not aware of how great they presaged that. All right. So that's the end of the movie. But I have to ask, I have to know, how long was it between the time that this movie ended and the time that you next watched porn? Negative 20 minutes, <laughs> Noah. Well, so the thing that auto played literally as this ended, what auto played on the YouTube stream was a totally not comedic Mormon production of like the Book of Mormon, like their own musical ballet version. Yeah. Uh -huh. So <laughs> zero seconds. <laughs> we were close. Zero seconds. Yeah, we did. We could have gone back to back, buddy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, oh, good. They teed me up. <laughs> no, I'll be honest. I didn't last 20 minutes. We couldn't have gone back to back. <laughs> All right, so that's going to do it for our review of Pornography, The Great Lie, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to tantalize you with another title. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, for the end of Mormon Movie Month, we've had cowboys, we've had a treasure hunt, we've had pornography, and now it's time for the Cokeville Miracle. That's right. It's the time God saved everyone in a school shooting slash bomb slash hostage situation. Oh, that should be tasteful. Great. That'll be good. Okay. Great. We need God in times of national crisis. We've learned that. <laughs> yeah, don't we? 
All right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 252 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Moishi for hanging out with us tonight, and even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist Citation, Need of the Skeptic Grant, and D&D Minus. Yes, we finally reached the point in Mormon Movie Month where the pre-records were after D&D Minus came out. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. I went on to end Mormonism with my Oculus Quest. Mm -hmm. The porn that dude saw 31 years ago went on to define Eli as a human being. Everything you've ever seen that pretends to be real science or a documentary about how porn is bad is funded by Mormons. 100% of it, all the time, forever. I like that they ignore it. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm talking about, right? You've seen that porn. Oh, absolutely. Okay, thank you. All right. And uh, I notice notice (laughs) that (laughs) me and Moishi strategically failed to answer that question. Um, I assume you never acknowledge the cum. You play right through, Eli. That's how it's done. (laughs) All right, Interstitial 3 and Morgan, maybe a little porn music in the background for this one. Four, Four, five. five. Fuck, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. (laughs) You started, I I already, well, no, the thing is, is I had already started counting him with Heath. You just got to go. You got to go then, right? Because he'll just. I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting to come in on four. I feel like there's nothing else you come in on four for. Name one other thing you come in on four. All right. Oh, I, I wish go. we weren't recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to know. I'm ca- now I'm curious what your answer to that was. All right. Right. Johnny, Johnny, you're not. Bene, <laughs> Ramsey, yeah. No, 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 no. All right. Because we are recording, you see. One more time with feeling. Three, four, four, four five, five, five. You didn't do it, did you? He totally did. I heard him. Fat piece of shit. But no, he, he wow. did it at the end. But he I, forgot, and then at the end he went four five. But didn't I was you? gonna say I do think that he hit the four late. Right? I was a little late. Okay, I was a you little late. late on four. Late. We, just, <laughs> we have evidence of it. You can't lie about it's audio. That you're record. It's a record. It's a record. We can hear other. it. I can hear it with my ears. <laughs> so so let's, I know you're. Li- I think you're lying. I think you're a liar. <laughs> let's try that one more time. Everybody together on four. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.